Introducing a classic TV series from 1974. This show revolves around a family living in public housing in Chicago. It combines humor and social commentary to address real life issues with a light touch. Keep watching for surprising, funny, and touching moments ahead. Is there a scene from the series that stuck with you? Maybe it's a famous catchphrase or one of the heartfelt speeches about family and resilience. One standout in the cast is a talented actor who played the matriarch. Her portrayal brought warmth and strength to the screen. Who is your favorite classic Hollywood actor in the series? Was it the hardworking father or perhaps the energetic and comedic character? We'd love to hear your memories or experiences with the show. Share them below. Stay tuned for more fascinating tidbits about this beloved series. There's plenty more to uncover. Good Times is a TV show from 1974 that centers on the Evans family living in a public housing project in Chicago. The plot revolves around their daily struggles and triumphs as they navigate life in a tough urban environment. James Evans, the father, works hard to provide for his family, while Florida Evans, the mother, holds the family together with her love and wisdom. Their children, JJ, Thelma, and Michael, each bring their own unique personalities and challenges to the mix. Despite facing poverty and adversity, the family finds joy and laughter in each other's company. Good Times has been praised for its realistic portrayal of African-American life and its memorable characters. It achieved significant acclaim during its run and remains a beloved classic in television history. In the world of the show, despite some controversies, Esther Roll and Janet Dubois became good friends. Their friendship off-screen made the atmosphere friendly for everyone working on the show. Tommy Blackwell, who had caused some trouble before, came back and added excitement by playing a character who caused some drama by taking Florida's children hostage. One of the actors, Jimmy J.J. Walker, was memorable in his role and had famous friends like Cuba Gooding and David Letterman. Their friendships added energy to the show's behind-the-scenes atmosphere, making it more interesting for viewers. These personal connections among the cast and crew made the show richer and more enjoyable for everyone involved. It's amazing how these connections played a big part in making Good Time special. In the earlier seasons, Michael was the voice of insights into the black community, tackling issues in a way that seemed less threatening coming from a kid. The writers strategically gave him jokes and lines that shed light on community matters. Esther Roll, the central figure in the series, had her sisters, Estelle Evans and Rosanna Carter, make guest appearances on the show. This familial connection added a personal touch to the cast dynamics. Interestingly, the school Keith attended was never explicitly named throughout the series. The omission left a subtle gap in the character's background, adding an air of mystery to his academic life. These behind-the-scenes details offer a glimpse into the creative decisions and personal connections that shaped the narrative of the series. The deliberate choice to use a child character to address societal issues, the inclusion of Roll's real-life relatives, and the undisclosed school name for Keith all contribute to the unique texture of the show. Motown artists James Gilstrap and Sandra Williams performed the theme song for the television series, while Quincy Jones handled the original demo. The show, centered around a struggling black family in the Chicago ghettos, drew inspiration from the classic play and film Raisin in the Sun. Notably, actor Ralph Carter, who played a key role in the series, had previously earned a Tony Award nomination for his performance in the Broadway musical adaptation of Raisin. During the peak of his time on Good Times, Ralph Carter was positioned for teen idol singing status. His sole release, Young and in Love, came out in 1976 under Mercury Records. The album featured two singles, namely Extra Extra and When You're Young and in Love. Carter also showcased his singing talent in several episodes of the TV series. This musical endeavor marked a significant departure for Carter, who had initially gained recognition as a stage performer. The crossover from Broadway to a television series showcased his versatility as an artist, emphasizing his ability to excel in both acting and singing roles. Back in 1972, John Amos and a young Ralph Carter shared the Broadway stage in Tough to Get Help, a comedy directed by Carl Reiner and written by Steve Gordon. Even though the play closed on opening night, it marked the beginning of the connection between Amos and Carter, who later became his on-screen son. Louis Gossett Jr. briefly appeared on the show as Wilbert, Florida's brother, in a single episode. This was part of the producer's search for potential replacements for John Amos. Gossett also played Thelma's older boyfriend during his short time on the series. The catchphrase Die No Might became incredibly popular, leading to Dynamite, a children's magazine published from 1974 to 1992. 
Jimmy J.J. Walker, the originator of the catchphrase, even graced the cover in April 1975, contributing to the show's lasting influence. Despite originating from the show mod, Good Times maintains its own storyline with no direct references to its predecessor. Florida and James Evans reside in Chicago, distinct from their roles in mod, and their past professions are not mentioned, though Florida once referenced being a maid. The series wasn't initially planned as a spin-off. Esther Roll's interest prompted her role as the family matriarch Florida Evans, leading to continuity disparities between the shows. Bookman, often dubbed Buffalo Butt, earned the nickname Booger from Malona during the series. In the world of television, a seasoned actor added depth and warmth to a beloved sitcom. As an experienced performer, he brought to life the character of a father, previously seen in another show. His portrayal resonated with viewers for its authenticity. The unexpected departure of this actor from the cast left a lasting impact on both the show and its ensemble. Unlike typical farewells, the news of his exit was not disclosed to the cast until they received the script outlining his character's untimely demise. This revelation sent shockwaves through the tight-knit group of actors as they grappled with the sudden absence of a key cast member and the emotional weight it brought to the storyline. His portrayal of the father figure was more than just a supporting role. It was a significant thread in the fabric of the show. His departure marked a turning point for the series as the remaining cast members navigated the challenges of continuing without his season presence. The ripple effect of this unexpected twist added layers of complexity to the show's narrative, bringing forth new dynamics and story arcs that captivated audiences. In the world of television, where surprises are carefully crafted to keep viewers engaged, this departure remains a memorable and impactful moment. As fans reminisce about the show's rich history, the portrayal of the character continues to resonate, reminding us of the unpredictable nature of storytelling on screen. This unexpected turn, masterfully executed, reflects the nuanced artistry of the writers and the resilience of the remaining cast members who carried the torch forward. And so, the tale of this actor and his transformative role in the show unfolds as a chapter in television history, leaving a lasting impression on the hearts of fans and the cultural landscape at large. Norman Lear, the creative force behind some well-loved TV shows, spotted the talent of Gary Coleman in a regular bank commercial. Lear took a bold step to include Coleman in two of his influential series Good Times and The Jeffersons. These shows not only entertained, but also challenged societal norms and stereotypes. In the final episode, responding to fans' requests, characters Bologna and Florida underwent a significant change, breaking away from the negative stereotypes they were initially bound by. This unexpected twist showcased Lear's commitment to pushing boundaries and creating thought-provoking content. The mystery surrounding Florida's maiden name added an interesting layer to her character. Despite fan speculations, the show's creators chose not to reveal this detail. Theories floated around, suggesting surnames like Wilson, Jackson, or Brown, sparking lively discussions among viewers. Florida Evans Dixon played a central role throughout the series. In the fifth season, her story took an unexpected turn as she adopted the Dixon surname. However, after Carl's departure in season six, the character returned to her original identity as Florida Evans. Looking back, Lear's casting choices and storytelling decisions continue to have a lasting impact, shaping the way we perceive and talk about television. The enduring popularity of these shows speaks to the power of storytelling in challenging societal norms and sparking meaningful conversations. In the realm of television history, one finds a connection between the character Florida's name in the show and the state of her birth, as well as a familial tie to one of Esther Roll's real-life sisters. At the 1974 Tony Awards, she showcased her co-star Ralph Carter's talent by introducing him to sing Sidewalk Tree. Years later, a recreation of a 1975 episode titled The Politicians aired in December 2019, featuring appearances by notable cast members including John Amos, Jimmy Walker, Bern Nadette Stannis, and Janet Dubois, marking one of Dubois' final television appearances. Amos departed from the series due to concerns about its portrayal of African-American life, which he found unpleasant and somewhat insulting. Fans and friends directed complaints at him, leading to his decision. In response, his character met a tragic end in a car accident, solidifying his departure. Unbeknownst to Amos, his exit from the show quickly led to a role in the acclaimed series Roots. Roll, on the other hand, left the series after the fourth season, citing concerns about JJ's character being a negative role model for young black individuals. But she returned for the sixth and final season only after producers committed to making JJ more respectable. 
In a specific episode, JJ faces a serious accusation when a girl claims he gave her VD, now known as STI. This particular storyline added a unique twist to the series, addressing real-life issues. The show's cast experienced significant departures, each driven by individual concerns and perspectives. Amos and Roll, pivotal figures in the series, left their mark on good times contributing to its evolution. In one of the season six episodes of the TV series Mistress Baker, the mother of Larry Baker, a grade school student, takes a prominent role. The two-part episode titled Florida's Favorite Passenger Part 1 and Florida's Favorite Passenger Part 2 features B.B. Drake in the role of Mistress Baker. Notably, B.B. Drake had previously appeared in season three as Savannah Jones in the episode titled Sweet Daddy Williams. While the main characters did not feature in every episode, Bernadette Stannis, who portrayed Thelma Evans, was an exception. She appeared in all episodes except one, showcasing her consistent presence throughout the series. Ralph Carter, known for his Broadway performances, took on the role of Michael Evans. Interestingly, before Carter, another young Broadway actor, Haywood Nelson, had initially been cast for the role. However, according to Nelson in an interview, the producers decided on Carter due to his extensive experience in front of a live audience. It's worth noting that, prior to these casting decisions, a young Lawrence Fishburne was also considered for the role. And that's a glimpse into the behind-the-scenes dynamics and cast changes within the series, highlighting the diverse talents that contributed to its success. In the show, Janet Dubois took on the role of Penny's adoptive mother. Meanwhile, Ralph Carter, initially part of the stage musical Reason, joined the cast after the producers bought out his contract. During the first season, he was credited as appearing courtesy of Raisin. Interestingly, Norman Lear, the show's creator, urged Jimmy Walker, a stand-up comedian, to enroll in acting classes during the production. Despite Lear's insistence, Walker declined. He expressed discomfort with the dramatic multi-story arcs and serious issues the show tackled. Walker's comfort zone was in comedy, not drama. Fortunately, the cast surrounding him included veteran serious dramatic actors such as Esther Roll, John Amos, Ralph Carter, and cameo actors like Louis Gossett Jr., who played Florida's brother Wilbert and won the Best Supporting Actor Award in 1983. In summary, the diverse cast brought different strengths to the series, blending comedic talent with seasoned dramatic performances. The dynamics created a unique mix of entertainment and substance, making Good Times a noteworthy production in television history. In the early seasons of the series, a portrait painted by J.J. adorned the closing credits, showcasing the Evans family. However, after the departure of James Evans, a mural created by J.J. for the local bank replaced the family portrait. In the final season, the opening credits featured a painting of the cast that transitioned into a live shot. In the episode titled Rich is Better Than Poor, Edna's grammar undergoes a notable transformation. Beginning with the bonics, she concludes the episode speaking perfect English. Throughout the series, the evolution of JJ's artistic space is apparent. Initially, an easel prominently stood in the living room. As the series progressed, this gave way to a draftsman's board. These subtle shifts in the closing credits, character development, and set details contribute to the dynamic narrative of good times, offering viewers a glimpse into the series' creative choices and character arcs. Before appearing on Good Times, John Amos and Ralph Carter starred in the Broadway play Tough to Get Help, in a particular episode of The Wayans Bros. Sean dreams he's J.J. with Bernadette Stannis, Johnny Brown, and Janet Dubois reprising their roles. Dubois, known for her portrayal of Wilona Woods, also played Sean and Marlon's grandmother. Additionally, she co-wrote and composed the iconic Movin' On Up theme from the Jeffersons, where her voice is heard. In the mid-1970s, Carl Weathers, famous for his role as Apollo Creed in the Rocky movies, played Calvin Brooks, the charming husband of Mistress Brooks, known as The Wiggler. The show, originally called Greg Day, took viewers back to the lively disco era. The Brooks family, with their upbeat energy, danced to funky music and glittering lights spreading joy on the screen. Each episode showed how people can stay strong and funny during tough times. As the disco ball spun and the music played, viewers felt the warmth of love and laughter that kept the Brooks family together. This show made a lasting impression on TV history, leaving a memorable impact on audiences everywhere. In the TV series, J.J. really liked Kool-Aid, making the story feel more real. The show is set in the Cabrini Green housing projects on Chicago's north side, a place shown in the opening and closing credits, giving a unique backdrop to the characters' lives. The Cabrini Green High Rises, an important part of the series, were torn down on March 30, 2011, ending an era for the Chicago setting. 
The switch from the demolitions to earlier episodes with the busy high-rises adds historical meaning to the series' context. Penny's moms, Janet Dubois and Chip Fields, had a special connection off-screen. Their birthdays, both on August 5, are six years apart, with Dubois born in 1945 and Fields in 1951. This coincidence adds an interesting aspect to the personal bond the actresses shared during the show. All these little details in the series, from character choices to the actresses' shared birthdays, make Good Times a classic that connects with people of all ages. These small elements, along with a mix of humor and social commentary, show the careful work behind the scenes. The series boasted an array of notable guest stars, featuring appearances from Jay Leno, Debbie Allen, Carl Weathers, Gary Coleman, Robert Guillaume, John Witherspoon, Charlotte Ray, Cheryl Lee Ralph, Shirley Hemphill, Lou Gossett Jr., Conchata Farrell, Gordon Jump, J.A., Preston, Nancy Morgan, Carl Franklin, William Christopher, and Philip Michael Thomas. In an interesting casting choice, John Amos took on the role of the Evans family's father, despite being only eight years older than Jimmy J.J. Walker, who portrayed the eldest son and almost 19 years younger than Esther Rawl, who played his wife, Florida. This casting dynamic wasn't uncommon in African-American comedies of the 1970s produced by Norman Lear. A similar age difference could be observed in The Jeffersons, where Sherman Hemsley, playing George, was approximately 20 and a half years younger than Isabel Sanford, who portrayed Louise. Despite being dismissed from Good Times for being a disruptive element, Norman Lear brought John Amos back into the fold three years later for his new sitcom, Mr. Dugan. In the later seasons of the show, there was a famous painting called The Sugar Shack that appeared a lot, especially in the beginning and end scenes. This painting was made by Ernie Barnes and was also on the cover of Marvin Gaye's album, I Want You. One interesting thing about the show was the friendship between two characters, Esther Roll and Janet Dubois. Even though there was a big age gap of 25 years between them, Dubois played Roll's best friend from high school. Bernadette Stannis, another actor on the show, talked about how Roll was like a role model to her. She said that their friendship helped her grow personally. Roll's influence on Stannis went beyond just acting. It showed how strong the connections were between the actors, both on and off the screen. It's a reminder of the special bonds that were formed during the making of the show. Initially, when the director suggested the catchphrase dynamite, for JJ, he hesitated, thinking the audience wouldn't buy it. But John Rich, the director, insisted, and eventually, it became a defining feature of the show. Norman Lear, the creator, wasn't on board at first, but Rich pushed for it, and JJ ended up saying it once per episode, becoming the show's signature. Despite criticism for perpetuating stereotypes, JJ became wildly popular, with his catchphrase drawing thunderous applause from the audience. Esther Roll and John Amos, however, weren't fans considering JJ's antics stereotypical. Roll even left the show because of it. Still, JJ, played by Jimmy Walker, became the breakout star reflected in the show's credits by season three. Thelma's bedroom walls were adorned with posters of icons like Jimi Hendrix, Sly Stone, and Bill Cosby, reflecting the cultural backdrop of the time. Janet Jackson made a memorable appearance on SNL spoofing Good Times alongside Maya Rudolph, Tracy Morgan, and Kenan Thompson. The skit humorously exaggerated the series' sensationalized portrayal of life in the ghetto. JJ's character faced criticism for its depiction of African-American youth, but Jimmy Walker defended it, highlighting that JJ's actions were mischievous rather than criminal. In one episode, the Jackson 5's hit song Shake Your Body played in the background, featuring Janet Jackson, Michael's sister, who portrayed Penny. Chip Fields initially auditioned for the role of Thelma Evans, but didn't secure it. However, producers remembered her, and later cast her as Penny's abusive mother. Interestingly, Chip's daughter, Kim Fields, eventually appeared on the show as a friend of Penny's and a student on Florida's bus. Despite being mistakenly considered a spin-off of Maud, the series isn't. Esther Roll and John Amos did appear on Maud, but their circumstances were different. Florida worked as a maid for the Finley family, while Henry was a firefighter. Norman Lear, the creator, placed the characters in an unrelated situation for good times, keeping only the family surname and Florida's first name consistent. Florida's emotional outburst, shouting damn, 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 after James' death, remains one of television's most iconic moments. During the 1970s, a TV show captured the hearts of audiences across the nation with its unforgettable characters and engaging storylines. One actor, Jimmy J.J. Walker, became famous for his role as a cheerful teenager known for his infectious laughter and catchphrase Dino Mike. 
Another actor, Ralph Carter, portrayed a passionate activist son in the same household, tackling important social issues with authenticity. Even Janet Jackson, who later became known for her self-help book, True You, began her career on this show. Together with the rest of the cast, they helped make the show a beloved part of television history. Their stories continue to inspire and entertain audiences today. In the mid-1970s, a catchphrase emerged from the TV series that became iconic Die No Might. This expression, popularized by Jimmy J.J. Walker, ranked number 14 in TV Guide's list of TV's 20 top catchphrases. Interestingly, Ralph Carter, who portrayed the youngest son, Michael Evans, wasn't the initial choice. Initially, the producers had hired Haywood Nelson for the role, but later switched to Carter due to his extensive experience in front of live audiences. Esther Roll, dissatisfied with the portrayal of the character J.J., left the show after the 1976-1977 season. However, she returned for the 1978-1979 season after the producers promised to improve the character's image. These dynamics added depth to the series, making it more engaging for viewers. In the show, a notable first occurred when Willona referred to Mr. Bookman as Booger and Buffalo Butt. This marked the debut of the term Booger on television. John Amos and Jimmy J.J. Walker, familiar faces from Let's Do It Again, made appearances. Esther Roll, known for creating the character Florida Evans on Maud and its spin-off series, was instrumental in shaping the show's dynamic. In the series, J.J.'s catchphrase evolved from Die No Might to I Know and later to You Know What Can I Say. His quirky phone greeting was Cello. Louis Gossett Jr., who made appearances in only two episodes, stands out as the sole cast member to have won an Oscar. He earned this accolade for his role as Gunnery Sergeant Emil Foley in the film An Officer and a Gentleman. Interestingly, Jimmy Walker, known for his role in the series, has transitioned to the Republican Party and occasionally appears on Fox News. Additionally, Norman Lear disclosed in a recent interview that Walker is romantically involved with ultra-conservative commentator Ann Coulter. One actress gained fame for her role as Thelma Evans, a beloved character from a classic TV series. The show aired on Fridays at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time and became a big hit, capturing the hearts of viewers across America. It replaced another show called Rollout and was praised for its realistic portrayal of African-American life. Alongside her, another actor, John Amos, played a significant role in a spin-off series called 704 Hauser. Although it only lasted six episodes, Amos's performance made a lasting impact on audiences. Being part of two lead roles in a Norman Lear production showed his talent and skill as an actor. These moments from television history still connect with people today, highlighting the power of good storytelling and memorable characters. Two talented actors, Esther Roll and John Amos, came together on a popular TV show. They played a married couple, captivating audiences with their chemistry for many seasons. However, when Amos's character left the show, fans were deeply affected. Roll also worked with Louis Gossett Jr. in different TV episodes, showing her acting range. Interestingly, in the show, the family's bathroom was rarely shown, but played a significant role in two episodes about alcoholism. This highlights how the show tackled important issues. Good Times made a lasting impact on TV history, connecting with viewers long after it originally aired. It shows how powerful storytelling can be in entertainment. 